All right, once again, we want to say we're thankful for the opportunity to bring a message and to share some song with you today from the Elk Valley Advent Christian Church. We also know that some of the restrictions have been lifted in this uh, uh, time of trouble that we've had here in the pandemic. But, but I want to say that uh, next Sunday, we'll be opening the doors to the church at 11 o'clock. We're not going to start at 10, but we're going to start at 11 o'clock. Hope that uh, you go by the guidelines that's been posted, the mask, and always wash your hands, and we'll try to provide some of the uh, uh, sanitary things that we need to clean around on the pews, and hope you all feel comfortable. It definitely will be your choice. Those of you that come are welcome. We'll, well, like I say, we'll go by the guidelines. I'm anxious to transition back into the church. So fortunately and hopefully we'll do that as soon as possible. So at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Martinez and his wife, uh, Tanya, to come on up and uh, open the service with some song. We'll enjoy ourselves and have a good time. Thank you. Once again, I've been Satan this morning, and I battled him all the day long. But in my weakness, God sent me in and at some Valleys. 
Oh, I thank him for all the storms he brought me through. For if I never had a problem, how would I ever know my God could solve them? How would I know what faith in his word could do? That's why I'm singing now through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Yes, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to depend upon His word. Oh, yes, through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon the world. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. And you've got peace of mind Like you've never known But when these change And you're down in the valley Don't lose faith You're never alone For the God of the mountain it's still body in the valley When things go wrong You know he'll make them right And the God of the good time Is still God in the bad time The God of the day Is still God in the night I will sing that again Oh, the God of the mountain yeah. is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, I know He'll make them right. For the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day. Still God in the night. You talk of faith when you're up on the mountain. Over oh, talk comes easy when life's at its best. But down in the valley Truth. of pride and temptation, that's when faith. Is really put to the test For the God of the mountain Is still God in the valley When things go wrong I know he'll make them right For the God of the good times Is still God in the bad times The God of the day Still God is the night, and the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. reading a few verses here and then I'll go back into the Old Testament and come back to where we are in the New. It's just part of the way that I bring out a message. I'm going to read a few verses here. This is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm not going to go through all the verses, but this is when the Apostle Paul is giving a charge to Timothy to preach the gospel. And along with that, he's giving him some direction about some of the things that he's going to face and he said, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, 
and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. We know that the Bible is clear saying that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. He is the light of the world, and people turn away from the truth, and I believe they're believing things that are not sound doctrine today that don't go along with God's word, and they call it preaching or teaching. But I'm going to use another verse or two here. So the Apostle Paul, after he tells him to watch in all things, endure affliction, he said, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. And here's one of the key verses I want to bring out of the message today. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Let me go back into Genesis, and I mentioned that I believe that God is the creator of all things, the heaven, the earth, and all the things that dwell therein, the heavenly host. And God made it clear that in six days he created all these things by his voice, and the Lord said, and on the seventh day, God rested. Now, God did not finish all the works that are planned out in the future. But there is a time even that the Apostle Paul is saying that he has fought the good fight, kept the faith, and he finished his course. But I want to bring out the message today that as God looked through time, and he knows that Adam sinned. We read about the first man, Adam, that sinned. And then we read about the first murder that Cain slew Abel and how that sin had entered into the world. That in Genesis chapter 6, he, he came to a man by the name of Noah. And Noah was an upright man, a man that God saw that was perfect in his generation, and a man that walked with God. And God gave to Noah the very uh, measurements and the very details to build an ark of safety. And to build that ark because he was going to destroy the first world by flood. And as Noah began to build the ark, he had to start from the bottom up. You don't build something from the top down. You have to build it on a foundation. And as God gave him all the details, as he began and started to finish building the ark, at the finishing touch, he said, you place a window the size of one cubit in the ark, then you close the door, and God brought the rain. That window is what finished the ark. That when the things that God had uh, detailed, and the rain came, and the rain began to subside, he opened the window. And the advice that I give to people today, we need to look up. You know, we so many times, we go down and God asks us to be humble and I think it's the right thing to humble ourselves before God and to bow our heads, but there's times we need to praise him. And I tell you, when the surety is he opened the window of the ark and the rain began to subside, he sent out a raven and the raven, if you look, said hey, the raven would go to and fro. If you look into Job, you'll see another to and fro, but I'm not going to get into the book of Job today. And he also sent out a dove. And that dove, when it returned, that dove returned with an olive branch. And there's a lot of history into the olive branch. But I want to talk about Noah had to finish the ark. God has a plan today, and that plan is to be finished. And as God looked through time, I tell you, in Daniel chapter 5, you remember the story of Daniel, how that Nebuchadnezzar went over and how that he had uh, besieged the Chaldeans and he had taken all the vessels, the golden vessels of silver and everything and brought it back. And, and Nebuchadnezzar, as he'd gone through, he'd seen a dream and Daniel was an interpreter of that dream. And you could go through the part of what Nebuchadnezzar being the head of gold and the silver, the brass, and right on down to the feet. But I want to move on a little farther that Nebuchadnezzar, who had, by our terms, had lost his mind. 
But at the end of the time before Nebuchadnezzar died, he praised the living God. He stood and he talked about the great God of the heaven and the earth. But he had a son who intervened and took in the kingship. His name was Belshazzar. Belshazzar. And this son, he wanted to have a great feast. We're over in uh, Daniel chapter 5, chapter 6. And he had a great feast. And he called forth for the princes and for the wives and the concubines and all the people with authority. Boy, he's going to have a big shindig. And he brings in the food and they drink all the wine. I've been to a few of them parties. Not that one. But I can tell you this. The more you drink, the crazier you get. And they had done got a little bit wild down there. And old, old uh, Belshazzar, he happened to look on the wall and there was a hand. And there was some writing on the wall in the plaster of the wall. And he couldn't interpret what it was. I tell you, there came a fear up on him that day. And there ain't no doubt. So he sins and he tries to find an interpreter of what he'd seen. And guess who they get? Old Daniel, the interpreter of dreams. And they bring Daniel, and he reads the writing on the wall. The writing was, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Eupharsin. And he wanted to know what that meant. And I can tell you, old Daniel said, God has looked at your kingdom to finish it. Your days are over. He's come to say that this time, and there'll be a divided kingdom. And that's going to be, in the future, the Medes and the Persians. And I want you to know that's Iraq. And I ran today. And his time had been finished. Just as he had interpreted the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold, the silver, his days. And we could go through the history of the dream. But I want to take you to some important things over in the New Testament. I like to preach about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now Jesus, we know as we look back into the history about the birth and the prophecy of Jesus Christ how he was born, led into the wilderness, baptized, led into the wilderness, be tempted of the devil. We read about all these things. How that Jesus, after the baptism, being led into the wilderness, he comes by choosing the disciples. And he says, follow me. Be ye a follower of me. And the disciples begin to follow Jesus. And he goes through this time. He does miracles. He makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. He does these miracles that people could see even walking on water, calms the storm. Jesus does all these things, but still people don't believe. We've got the same thing today in life. People don't believe. They don't believe in a true and living God. They don't believe in a man called Jesus Christ today. Though he's done all that he could do, fulfilled every plan that God sent his son to do, people still don't believe. And if you don't believe in God, if you can't look out through this open window of life and see the heavens and stars and the moon and see the earth and all the things that dwell therein, if you don't see God, then you don't believe. That's how it narrows down to so many things. But during the fellowship of the disciples, Jesus in Luke, he, he spoke a parable. I think it's Luke 16. He said, which of you would consider to build a tower? And not sit down and weigh out all the costs that you might finish the building of the tower. This is a parable that relates to our spiritual life. And those that don't finish the tower, others come back and say, you many times, they never did finish that house. They never did finish that building. There's a lot of things in my house and different things I go to do I don't seem to ever get finished. But I'll tell you one thing. We've got to finish this course that Paul said he had to finish. Right. We've got to finish this way of life. I said in my, to my wife this morning, this is the longest span I can remember of not being in the house of God on a consistent basis. This is a time that I know affects the church, but I want you to know that people that preach or teach or have a, a place and come to church on the basis of what they believe, it's affected all of us. I've never missed this many Bible studies on a Wednesday. I've never missed this many things uh, according to our Sunday school and church services. But I can tell you that God in my heart has never left me, that Jesus has stayed with me closer than a brother, but I've also had to stay with him 
I've had to seek his face, call upon his name, and ask him to stay with me and to be with me while I could be with him. And I'll say that to the church and to the believers. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you, that he would be with you all the way, even until the end. And we need to keep that built deep inside with whatever happens in this world, whatever troubles there may seem to be in this world. We need to stay with what we believe. We've got to finish this course that God has set for us. This is for an everlasting. Now, I say this. In Matthew 16, there was a time that people in this world today even ask, who do you say that I am? Jesus looked at Peter, Simon Barjona, and he said, who do men say that I am? He said, some say thou art John the Baptist. Some say thou art Isaiah, which is Isaiah. And some say thou art Jeremiah or some great prophet. Some people can say a lot of things, but they won't believe that Jesus is who he is. And people in that time, they believed in reincarnation. People still today believe that people were here in some other form or some other fashion. This is a fable that's been told. I can tell you, I wasn't there at the time that Jesus was born, and you weren't either. I've got a birthday uh, since 1951, and I didn't come here before to fight no civil war. And I wasn't here, in the fo here before and something out there in the past. I'm here to living in this generation that I'm in today. And John the Baptist, his head was cut off. And Jesus didn't come to be John the Baptist. But I tell you, I worked in the mines for several years. I had a terrible accident. And I lost some toes in an accident. But I can tell you, I'm going to get my toes when John gets his head. That's what's going to be. Amen. And that's in the resurrection. There'll right. be a glorified body. Right. Amen. That's how it is. I've been limping since 1995. I've learned to live with it. But there'll be a day where there'll be no sickness, pain, or sorrow mm -hmm. in the resurrection of the dead when we have a glorified body. And I, I just thought I'd mention that to you. Probably don't mean a lot to you, but it does to me. This man called Jesus asked Simon Barjona, who men to say that I am, but he said now to the disciple, uh, who do you say that I am? That's a good one. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That's what we need to believe today. That's what gives us our salvation. You can't believe in one without the other. When God looked through the hour of time of sin, he had to send us a savior that would finish this plan of salvation. Thou art Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Right. There has to be a foundation in our Christian life. We have to have that foundation, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. That foundation is the rock. He is our cornerstone. He is our spiritual foundation that we have life and we can only as a church build on that foundation. Any other foundation will fall. It'll be as being built on the sinking sand. I think of that foundation so much. You know, when Jesus was taken to the cross from the time that he had done so many things that he'd done, he was taken to the cross and I'm going to tell you, I don't try to smooth this over. The reason that cross is empty is because he's not there now. But he suffered. He really suffered for our sins. He was tortured. He was mocked. He was nailed to the cross. He wasn't just tied up or strung up or hung. He was nailed to that cross. And he was placed between the heavens and the earth so people could look up. There's some history back in the Moses time, and, and I know that the serpent was on the pole, and, but this is a time that we need to still look up because he's coming back, and he's not coming back from the grave. He's already come from the grave. He's ascended into the heavens, and when he comes back, he's coming back, and the clouds will open, and all the things in the heaven and earth will melt with a fervent heat, and he's coming back with all his holy angels to take vengeance on them that know not God. Now that's why we need 
to look up. But I want to put you back in here when he was on the cross. And there you see Jesus is on the cross. He's being crucified. And he looks out and there is his mother. There's a song once, I wonder how Mary felt. You know, there's a lot of families today that's lost loved ones. There's a lot of people today that's gone and gone with the way of death and that's the living know they'll die and the dead know nothing. But there's a lot of people, families that have missed out on, on the last uh, time that they could show respects, even sometimes in the hospitals and nursing homes. And that's a sad day. But I go back to what Jesus was on the cross. He died for everyone. We don't just pick out, you come to church here, you're a Christian, you have another belief, you're a sinner. Listen, he called for whosoever will come. Yeah. Whosoever will. When you get sick and you go to the doctor, your first uh, uh, request is not, are you a Christian? You want to know if he's a good doctor. And if you're drowning in a water of a pool of of, of, of water and someone is standing there of another nationality holding a life raft. You're not a life uh, preserver. You're not going to ask them where they're from or what color they are. You're going to say, help me. That's who Jesus died for. He died for everyone. Right. Saved or sinner. And he died that you could have life and have it more abundantly. That's how Jesus Amen. lived his life. Amen. But the plan of salvation had to be complete. And as he hung on the cross, he looked, and there was Mary, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, which those names would also go by Maria. And I asked myself, I looked, where's the disciples? Where's the church? Where's the followers that were to follow him? And the Bible was clear to say, when the shepherd is smitten, the sheep shall scatter. But Jesus on the cross, he looked and said, Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Not just the crowd below, not just the sinner, but even to those disciples that had followed him. He was speaking to the whole world. Sometimes people are just not as knowledgeable. But he spoke with a loud voice, and he said, I thirst. And they took a sponge, and they put it on a pole. And they dipped it in vinegar and hyssop, which was a pain reliever, supposedly. And they placed it on his lips, and he bowed his head, and he said, it is finished. You'll find that in the book of St. John, mm -hmm. I think chapter 19. It's finished. God's plan to send his son from the day he was born, and the prophecy that he would be born, and the time that he would die on the cross, and the time that he would die on the cross for our sins, that part was finished. But the rest and the best was yet to come. Right. Not only was that plan of salvation of whosoever believes in him, God was not finished with his works. Jesus would live again. And three days in the tomb, he resurrected. And there at the tomb was Mary, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mm -hmm. the crowd so much. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I hope in my heart that you believe this biblical story. Not some fable that someone makes you feel good. Realize who you are in this life. Realize where you are in this life. Realize what you need. I said about missing the house of God. I believe that there's people who were missing the house of God long before this coronavirus had ever come in. There were people who were still wanting and searching for the most important thing in their life, but I want you to know God still loves you. God still loves you. Whatever wandering you are as the lost sheep out there, God still loves you. And God asks you just to come home. Come home. Come back. Take the steps. The further you go away, the further you come back. I want to say that part is finished, but the plan of God is not finished. Mm -hmm. The plan of God is for whosoever will, come and dine. Come and dine. Come and enjoy your fellowship. Walk away from the wages of sin that is death and enjoy the gift of God, which is eternal life. God gave us this plan from the beginning. From the first Adam that sinned, God had a plan 
to bring those who were lost. Abel gave a righteous sacrifice. God's not forgotten about Ur. And God's not forgotten about Abel. God had to make a plan to bring Abel from the grave. I know some people believe a little different about heaven and hell and who's there and who hasn't. But as I read, there's a righteous judge, and he's going to judge you according to your works in that day. And I hope that I can make it. Amen. I had a mom and dad killed in 2006 in an automobile wreck. And I know that when I went to that funeral, as many others, they were laying right there in that coffin. I saw them. And I saw them when we closed the coffin and carried it to the graveside. And I'll visit that graveside every now and then just to deal with my heart. And probably all of you or many of you have the same for your family or your friends. And I hope and I believe that one day after a while, if they did what they knew to do in the eyes of God, I'll see them again. I'll see them and I'll meet them with eternal life. And I know if I do what's right. But there's more still out here we hope to be saved. We have a family. We have children. We have neighbors. We're not just in this world to finish our work today. <clears throat> There's many, many things that we must do. One of the things for my calling is to preach. Oh, and I tell you, it has its times. I'll say this for all of you. You, you have your problems and your situations. I still live in this natural world, and I have mine. But the most important thing to me is God has to be first. Christ Amen. has to be first. Amen. I love you for your input. I love you for all the things. For David Fleming, who's, who's taken the time to do the videos, his, his support from his wife. And I could mention so many names of all of you that I miss and go on and on. Even back when I was a sinner of the people that I loved, I have one uh, individual that I will mention I've loved him since we were kids. His name's Joey Birch. He's my cousin. Boy, we could get into some of the messes if you'd never known. And his wife supported us when we got to drinking and riding motorcycles. <clears throat> and I thank God that he's my brother, man. <clears throat> we were always close in a family. But he's my brother in Christ. And I remember the day that I was converted and I had my teeth wired up in my mouth, my jaws from car wrecks, broken leg, and had gotten out of the hospital and was trying to get to a church. The only one I knew was my Uncle Goats out in Jackson County. And old Cuz come through and we just got fed up with the world. And now he's a Christian, his wife is a Christian, I'm a Christian, and I thank God for my family, and I would hope that we all make it into the kingdom. I love you. Thank you.